The media has consistently parroted the voice of the industry that is behind the uh, treatment of AIDS, saying HIV equals AIDS equals death. As a result, some people who have just merely tested positive for the antibodies have felt their life devastated. Some have committed suicide. And many of these individuals have been socially ostracized with a great deal of prejudice. Well, I was told I was going to die. And uh, it, psychologically, uh, it, was, it was almost like voodoo. They told me I was going to die, and I believed it. We've all been told that this is a death sentence to us. And as a result of that, they, you know, what, what's going to make the cover of time is going to be the person who finds the quote unquote magic drug that's going to cure AIDS. And I don't think we're ever going to see that. This is a glimpse of, of our future. Just the first sign of maybe looking at us who survive and why. Um, the media does that, you know, we know, for sensationalism. That's what sells papers. I mean, mankind as a race is more fascinated with death and war and destruction than he is with peace, happiness, tranquility. I mean, that's not fashionable. What keeps me alive is staying angry at the people that want to see us die. <laughs> you know, so, um, and I, you know, I've seen a lot of my friends die, and I've been talking about it for a long time, about AZT kills you, and a lot of them are. They passed away. This is the, what, I, what really needs to be stressed, that there's no hope that nutrition doesn't matter, that community doesn't matter, that spirit doesn't matter, is, is a tragic mistake. And in fact, there are so many instances of individuals finding their own grit. As, as Jerome, or as Viktor Frankl said, it, and, you know, that he saw that in concentration camps, as soon as a person became apathetic, they were dead. The survivors of concentration camps never yielded to apathy. And that's the situation we're in now straw that broke the camel's back for me was they had an auction at Sotheby's. And at Sotheby's, they auctioned off a $6,000 Ruby AIDS pen. And I said, this is obscene. This is an industry. There's a whole empire has been built on AIDS. I mean, there's people that need this now for corporations, pharmaceutical companies. They have a lot of money invested in, in our plight, in my plight. I'm angry about that. That, they don't want that to change. I know the political part of it now. I know it, it, a lot about it, and um, it saddens me to see what, what's, what's really going on. It's all about money. Gradually, I started to rely on my own deepest instincts about the treatments I was reading about because I was getting a lot of conflicting information. And I began to try to assemble for myself a conceptual model of how the body works and how it heals. The food is really our main teaching tool because people come down to the center, they sit at our family style tables, they get a lot of support from the people around them, they're able to share um, healing resources, information about new new treatments, interesting stuff that comes up. But the food is the main teaching tool. They see it. They're able to experience it. Then they want to know more about it. And that's where we're able to follow up with our classes in cooking and our lectures. And the name Whole Foods Project pretty much says it all. Uh, we serve organic, vegetarian food. And Whole Foods simply means food that is as close to its natural state as possible. So we don't use canned foods. We don't use highly processed foods. We don't use any dairy or meat. So we are a vegan program. It's so nice to come in. There's flowers, fresh flowers on the table every day. The tablecloths are always colorful and clean. Uh, the service are one of us. Everybody is, um, you know, we're all in this together. And not everyone here at the center is here because they're, they're ill or they're diseased or there are a lot of people who have family members that have passed on, that are sick now. Um, people come here for the Course in Miracles. Uh, just the word, the word of, of joy and peace and service to mankind, you know, helping each other. So there are people brought here for many, many reasons, not just disease. And, and we all learn from one another. Just coming here lifts my spirit. I've, I've, been, I've been very depressed and isolating. 
There's so many groups that I come to here uh, for meditating, body work. I mean, without the Manhattan Center for Living, I don't know what I'll do. I mean, it's just a, it's just a uh, place to come to for refuge. I get a lot of feedback here. Someone said, what you all really serve is love on a plate. And I go away feeling lifted. And that is part of what we do. It's not measurable. But it certainly makes a difference when you start caring about something. And you want to know where your food came from. You want to know that it wasn't grown with chemicals. And there's another element of this. These chemicals are not only hurting us, but they're hurting the farm workers that are using it. And so we have to sort of start broadening our view and seeing what is the real effect of the standard American diet. And so when we take it home, we care for it, we cook it, we serve it with love, we're really taking care of ourselves. And that may be more important, actually, than, than what we're eating. It's interesting because on other things in my life, I, um, I, I can get crazy. And this is the one thing that I'm very calm about. I really don't put a lot of, um, a lot of energy into worrying. I live my life. I have a good time. I'm active in, in a lot of organizations. I'm on the board of directors of God's Love We Deliver. I, um, I do a lot of service work, a lot of volunteer work. And that really is, is what my life is about. I also teach and uh, I also enjoy doing that. It's given me a new life, a new outlook, a freedom. I mean, I get goosebumps when I think about it because I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy to work with people that are worse off than I am. And believe me, we can all stop and think a moment. You know, every time I like second guess myself and I don't believe in my body and myself, it's like, um, you know, who knows my body better than me? You really have to love yourself. And uh, you have to learn how to think for yourself, too. I think that's very important, because I haven't found a doctor with a halo yet. Is there any hope with AIDS, or is it just, just sit back and let the people die when they die? I have to say that you know, the research is Michael Callan interviewed more. He himself is a long-term AIDS survivor more long-term survivors than anyone else said that if there's a characteristic that these people have in common, long-term AIDS survivors, it's grit. So these people didn't just think that life was worth living, but life was worth celebrating. It's been a, a real wonderful experience for me, N not having AIDS, but just as far as my life. I've, um, I'm an ex-addict. I um, have been clean for six years. And um, just by changing my life, by exercising, by juicing, by um, taking vitamins, by um, just being positive has turned my, my life around tremendously. I, I feel wonderful. I, I feel great. And probably the thing that makes me the most angry is that my doctor still denies that this can work. And every time I read in the paper that somebody else has died of AIDS, I, I almost feel like it's murder. Because it, maybe if he knew, and maybe if somebody could explain to him, you know, before it was too late, that there was an alternative method, uh, maybe it's be those people would be alive today. So I think it's important that my message gets out. I also had a lot of support from my Buddhist faith, um, which gave me a feeling that, a sense that this was an obstacle, that I could use this obstacle to, to live my life out of an fighting against something and building a greater life and a greater faith out of it. I would say the quality of my life is better today than it was 10 years ago. I think I'm more focused. I have more energy. Um, I see more purpose to my life. I don't, I don't really get uh, depressed a lot. God did not create AIDS, so it does not exist. God did not create illness. We created illness. We believe we need to be sick. We need to go to doctors to get well. That all that thinking has got to change because that will not make you well. It's, it's easy to be discouraged when people see a lot of their loved ones dying. And in community, in sharing pain, in recharging with one's spirit, and in living life fully, hope follows. And I, I've, I see that happen all the time, and I feel it for myself. 
It's been a positive experience, yeah. It's taught me so much about life. It's taught me so much about myself. Life is an extraordinary gift. This is a part of a, a journey for me. Um, and I feel like I'm walking on water. We all are. My doctor said to me, whatever you're doing, he said, keep doing it. So um, that was a shock to me um, because I thought he was in charge. Well, I'm in charge. And uh, so uh, wish me luck. Well, you've seen them and you've heard them. These are not test tube subjects. These are real live human beings. And their story needs to be told over and over again to dispel the popular myths about AIDS. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Gary Nall. I can't believe how much weight you've gained in three weeks. As a nutritionist, I've never seen anyone gain. I'm going to guess 20 pounds? Yes, it has been 20 pounds in, in less than two weeks. In fact, I even mentioned uh, to you that if I didn't film you now, in another three or four weeks, no one would ever believe you had been sick. It's true. I'm planning on getting much more weight. I feel like new money. Um, I uh, have a lot of energy, um, which I didn't have before. I feel better now than I've ever felt in my life, in spite of being HIV positive. Uh, this is the finest I've probably felt in my entire life. I just feel very comfortable with this sort of therapy. I'm keeping myself in the best shape I've ever been in, and I feel it's working. And I'm very happy about that. I feel great. I, I work sometimes 10 and 12 hour days, six days a week on a totally vegetarian diet, which is not supposed to be possible. But uh, I'm, I'm very healthy. I don't get a lot of uh, colds or any of any diseases, really. Anything that is natural, anything that is just fits into the scope that of creation is is beneficial. You know, after seven years, I'm 194 pounds now. I'm in better shape than the average 25 year old. I can outrun them. I can outlift them. Because of these changes, I have not had a single opportunistic infection since I've been diagnosed, and I don't know how many years before that that I was carrying the virus. But I've been very healthy. People tell me all the time how good I look. Um, I never hide my status <coughs> from anyone. I'm in the public. I'm a business entrepreneur. I'm an antique dealer. And I, anyone I discuss this with, they're always interested in my input on what I've done to myself because they tell me I always look good. I continue and I firmly believe in the practice of preventive medicine. I feel terrific. Ever since I went off processed cooked foods, I gained uh, sleep. I only need six hours of sleep at night compared to nine hours of sleep. I rollerblade. I get up in the morning. I have an incentive and an urge for life. And uh, I think I attribute that directly to my diet. I feel great. Um, I, couldn't be, I couldn't be healthier. Um, the fact is I've gained weight. Uh, everything that I had talked about prior to this has resolved. And uh, I'm now out there as a living specimen of hyperthermia and also as a living example of a person who had AIDS. And uh, I don't look at myself as having it. The biggest problem that I have today is that unfortunately, I still have that stigma. And until people start to realize that there are others of us that you're gonna be interviewing that don't have the disease any longer, it's not fair that now we're marked for the rest of our lives. I feel better now than I ever felt in my life. What kind of difference has this made? Oh, it's like night and day. I mean, I have more energy now. I'm thinking completely different. Um, my whole life has changed. I've taken control of my life for the first time in many years, and it's just wonderful to be alive.